In the UK, there are more than 850,000 people with dementia, and that number is expected to increase to over a million by 2025. There is increasing focus on how the home and the home environment can support people to age well. So to take on this challenge, we've established a multidisciplinary team from Loughborough University, Liverpool John Moores University, Halsall Lloyd Partnerships and the BRE Trust. We're investigating ways in which people can remain in their own homes even if they develop symptoms of dementia. A dementia-friendly environment in a residential scale building, by which I mean a domestic setting, a home. So in the house project, it's a two bedroom house. And so we've tried to base it on the idea that who would actually inhabit this house. So we have two personas in our house. We have Chris and Sally. So what visitors to the house will see is how Chris and Sally's life journey is represented in the house and perhaps how they might need to adapt the house in the future as their symptoms change and develop. So good afternoon, everybody, and um, thank you. Thank you so much for joining this virtual visit to Chris and Sally's house, which is a dementia friendly home uh, at Bray Innovation Park in Watford. So I'm Werner Hietala and I work as a trade advisor for the British Embassy in, in Helsinki, Finland. So to give a little bit of background to this event, um, aging society is one of the grand challenges which is identified by the UK government. And given Finland's rapidly aging population, uh, we see a lot of value in increasing cooperation between the two countries. So today's specific topic is on is, is dementia. And as I said, given the aging of the population, uh, it is crucial to improve the dementia friendliness and age friendliness um, of our existing housing stock and, and new buildings as well. So the dementia house we are talking about today is a, is a demonstration home uh, for those living with dementia and it presents evidence-based design adaptation and support solutions. The UK government is very much focused on uh, looking at innovation to help our aging population. Uh, next slide please George. So, uh, in fact, we have um, published the UK industrial strategy with four grand challenges, one of which is our aging society grand challenge. And we aim to harness the power of innovation to help meet the needs of our aging society. And our mission in this challenge is to ensure that people can enjoy five extra healthy, independent years of life by 2035, while narrowing the gap between the richest and the poorest. So just looking at aged care in the UK, there are around 850,000 people in the UK currently living with dementia, and this is set to rise to more than a million in the next 10 years. We have a number of uh, dementia charities across the UK and one of them is, is the Alzheimer's Society. And they have estimated that the total care of cost for people living with dementia in the UK is set to rise to 94 billion pounds by 2040. So the NHS in the UK recently launched its long term plan and this underlines the problem of the UK's growing ageing population and recommends a more targeted and personalised approach. So one example of um, some work that has been done in the south east of England uh, by the NHS has been the development of the first dementia village and this is based in Dover. And so there is a community hub with a cafe and space for activities. And uh, what they have done is they've converted 12 semi-detached homes to provide suitable accommodation for up to 30 people living with dementia. Next slide, please. And of course, today we are delighted to be joined by Deborah Pullen and the team from BRE Trust to tell us much more about um, the dementia friendly home that they have built in their innovation park. So I will hand over to the next speaker, please. Thank you, George. Thank you. Hello, everyone. 
uh, welcome to the story of Chris and Sally's house. Um, introduce myself. My name is Bill Holsall. I'm an architect and I'm a landscape architect. Um, and I'm senior partner at Holsall Lloyd Partnership uh, Architects and Designers. Um, I, I have to add, I'm not a medical pr practitioner, so we don't take, take any medical questions. Um, like, so a few years ago, uh, Rob MacDonald of uh, local John Moores University, who's joined us today, and myself, uh, set out to do some research into uh, design for dementia. And uh, sorry, George, can you move on the slide to get yeah, right there? We are. We 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 carried out some research in design, particularly through uh, a, a, an organisation called D D D Dementia Action. Uh, now. The, the, we, and we produced three books, which you can see there. Uh, now, the point of that, of the, the research really, in the first place, was to assist people to live well with dementia and to sustain their capacity in their own homes for longer. Uh, so it specifically addresses the domestic environment um, and uh, people's own environment, you know, the, the, uh, the, the streets and towns and neighborhoods where they live, uh, and uh, th th those uh, publications obviously drew a certain amount of attention, and then we were approached by the BRE to get involved in the uh, dementia home. Um, so first of all, uh, the issues, 70 to 80 percent of people living with dementia continue to live in their own homes. Uh, they live in the same neighbourhoods, use the same facilities and centres. So design for dementia can help people living in their own homes to sustain their capacity for longer and to maintain their quality of life as members of the community. Uh, so that's that's the objectives and that's it. This is the aging in place agenda, uh, which Julie talked about. Next, please, George. Now, our research, um, we became involved in um, a, a, a bigger project uh, and a key partner in our project was the Dementia Action Alliance. And these these uh, ladies are members of the Dementia Action Alliance. And we we approached research through design participation and to, trying to assist pe people living with dementia and get their experience and how they think it could be improved. And what we're looking at here is um, a prototype model of a, a dwelling designed for dementia, which we put together with their help. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and this is um, part of a living lab uh, with the same group. And what, what they're doing here is uh, we're using photo cue cards to do some um, analysis of uh, how dementia friendly is our city. So these are fairly random photographs of uh, parts of Liverpool and uh, people are uh, with, with the help of uh, carers and professionals are uh, giving their impressions of what, what they're seeing on the pictures. That's quite an interesting exercise. So this is the building. This is actually, uh, was never a house at all. It's actually uh, was an old stable block uh, forming part of the estate at uh, Watford, the, the, the demonstration project, so, sorry, the innovation park there. Now the, the bit with the green uh, line around it is the bit that we were offered to convert into the dementia home. Um, next slide, please. A two up, two down cottage is, is quite a sort of a typical building form in the UK, um, whether it occurs in a little terrace street or whether it occurs in a village. There's this kind of two room arrangement is quite historic. So. We reimagined the uh, Chris and Sally's house as being a two, two down cottage, and we uh, uh, speculated um, about what was wrong with it. And you can see some of the things there. Obviously, they're finding difficulty with the bathroom, they're in consonance issues, stairs are a struggle, use of the garden are poor, and so on. Thresholds, lighting levels inadequate, um, ventilation poor. Windows hard to open, and on a sunny day, there's glare and overheating, and there's restricted headroom at first floor. If we move up to the next slide, 
you can see that's the ground floor there. That's the first floor. So it's got sloping soffits and things like that. It's also got a lot of doors, which are uh, can be a problem for, for people living with dementia. Uh, next, please. So uh, the proposed interventions into the form were, well, first of all, we opened up the space in between the two rooms. Um, and uh, what this is the, uh, the ground floor. And uh, I think the, the, the most obvious thing is that it's become very uh, open plan. <clears throat> so it's in effect a single space with very few doors. Um, and it's uh, accessible lift or provision for one in the future. So we're trying to uh, anticipate future needs and make it flexible in the future. Uh, you can see there also that there's um, a, a small room with one with a blue bed in, which is, is categorised as a day room, but is uh, for, with it's the design thinking is that's a flexible space. It could be a designing room, it could be a hobby room, it could be a quiet room, or it could be a room for end of life care. Um, and you can see there that there's a track so that, that, that uh, people can be can, uh, helped into the shower room at the back there. Um, and uh, obviously the kitchen and living room are, are all um, visually connected. And uh, we can go on to the next slide, which is the uh, upstairs. Um, again, you see we've, we've got around the, uh, the low ceilings through the design. There's a small a tea kitchen area there which adjoins the bed main bedroom which is is there for to help nursing care or making a cup of tea or sorting out medication that kind of thing uh, we've got another another um, bathroom uh, shower room and the second bedroom um, if you could move on please George so this shows the flower, the, the, the floor arrangement at the, on the, the ground floor. Um, I think one of the things this, this shows quite clearly is that um, those yellow arrows, uh, we've designed it so that from key points in the, uh, the dwelling, uh, it, the, the, uh, the WC is visible. Um, and this is one of the things that came out of our research is that, that people uh, feel more comfortable if they know where the facilities are and are less uh, likely to have accidents. Um, you can see the red circles represent wheelchair turning circles, so the, the whole thing is wheelchair accessible. Um, next, next slide, please, George. Um, upstairs, uh, the, the, um, the master bedroom obviously all has the, the vision cone to the, uh, to the shower room and the WC there and uh, you can see the lift lobby opening onto the, the landing. Um, so some of these features which came from the um, the building, initial building that we were given. So you can see on the right hand side that there's some high level windows, which of course you wouldn't normally have. Um, but this is this is really trying to uh, demonstrate quite a lot of things in one uh, demonstration house you wouldn't necessarily want to do all of these things in your own house you might not want that disruption you might not want the um, the radicalness of the change but it's it's a, a compendium of ideas for people to pick at uh, next 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 page please yeah so this is the kitchen dining room uh, we've got an open plan arrangement we've got the legibility between the rooms we've got easy access to the WC and shower room with good visibility for orientation, lift access to the first floor. We've minimised the numbers of doors. Um, so if you imagine somebody uh, with dementia arriving at this house, they can immediately see where everything is. They're not confronted by a hallway with lots of different doors and having to make choices. Uh, it, the, the design has walkability as well as wheelchair access, so you can make your way through uh, the, the, the home by uh, hanging onto bits of furniture or bits of uh, worktop. Um, the kitchen has uh, glass doors and drawers for visibility of kitchen equipment. Uh, it makes things easier to find. 
Um, we've got high and low work surfaces for, to accommodate uh, people who might be in a wheelchair. We've got rounded corners everywhere to minimise risks from falls. We've got a view to green out of the window. Uh, put a new window in there to, 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 to get a view to green. View to green reduces stress uh, for, for anybody, but particularly for people with, living with dementia. We have good natural and artificial light. Um, we have tonal contrast between the floor, walls, doors, kitchen unit, fronts and worktops. Um, this is a scale of um, 100 points, really, and we're trying to get 30 percent difference in light ref reflectance values between adjoining surface surfaces to um, help perception of space uh, for, for somebody with uh, cognitive impairment. And there's, of course, there's personalization and memories to make it feel like a home. Uh, can we move on, please? Uh, the lounge. Uh, you see, we move through to the lounge. Uh, similar principles, open plan, view to green, um, high level of ambient and task, task lighting. Little details like curtains with a high highlighted edge for ease of use. Um, and the contrasting arms on the armchairs, you know. So there's, there's quite a lot of detail you can go into in this uh, this kind of design. Again, the view to green out of the window. Uh, next, please. Uh, the the day room, um, obviously a quieter room. Uh, you can see the wheelchair. One of the things that we did was to put wheelchair charging points uh, at key positions in in the in the dwelling. So this this is one in, that's in a bedroom. Uh, there's also one in a living room. So we're, we're kind of making it easier for people to uh, recharge the wheelchair, um, you, you know, any time of the day or night. Um, to put on the right hand side, there's a pocket door between the day room and the shower room for flexibility between alternative uses of the room. Uh, and we have uh, blackout blinds and uh, things like that to to make to help people to be uh, in terms of their cycle through the day and night. Uh, next, please. This is the uh, the shower room and bathroom. The, the the doors on your left are intended as a cupboard for the washing machine. One of the research uh, pointers is that um, people can find the, the sound of a washing machine uh, to be disturbing. So we've put it in a separate room of its own. Um, the, the bathroom itself, of course, is um, kitted out with uh, all, the, all the aids that you might expect. And uh, it, to, be, to be fair, the, 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 the shower room is, is actually more difficult to um, to make homely actually because it does have to have all these facilities uh, but the the um, uh, the appliances the white white uh, are white um, so they stand out against the floors and the walls um, and again this is for visibility and the light reflectance values um, next please and the master bedroom there so again contrasting uh tonal values between the floor and the bed and the, the walls and the curtains and so on to help that turn um, interpretation of space uh next please and the uh the guest bedroom um which observes obviously similar principles so I'm kind of a building services engineer on this project. And um, as Bill was saying, what we've tried to do is to create a solution that isn't, um, you know, is, isn't specific to, to dementia care homes, but would work uh, um, for um, any, any number of applications. So everyone needs ventilation. Uh, um, everyone, everyone needs to be kept comfortable. So what we've got in this, in this house is a is a natural ventilation strategy, which in fact is 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 the strategy in most UK homes. So, so therefore isn't an unusual. But what we've tried to do here is to have a combination of 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 
of uh, manual and um, an automatic control. And what this does is it gives the occupants the opportunity to open and close windows when they feel when they feel uh, uh, um, warm or too cold. But also it enables the system because we've got a series of carbon dioxide and temperature sensors in the building. It enables the system to to take control and to ensure that um, that occupants are supplied <coughs> with uh, um, an appropriate supply of fresh air, and also on a kind of predictive basis to 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 prevent overheating. So overheating has been a a, um, a sign has seen a significant increase in the UK in terms of its 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 threat to the elderly. So we've we've designed this natural ventilation uh, uh, system. We've sized it and designed the control system to enable us to avoid to avoid overheating. Um, but in terms of in terms of application to other to other challenges now, um, you know, ventilation and indoor air quality has never been so prominent um, in the in the news that is as it is now. Um, in response to COVID-19. So what we're able to do now is to use the data that we're getting from these sensors, use the CO2 data to, um, to maintain an enhanced ventilation uh, uh, um, to, to keep occupants uh, uh, safe in the, uh, in the face of um, SARS-CoV-2, um other other uh, coronavirus types of disease so what we're learning from this is a how occupants of these types of buildings are likely to use their windows and doors in terms of opening and close uh, and closing them but also um what we need to do in terms of the ventilation system to maintain <coughs> adequate adequate indoor air quality in the face of the uh, challenges that we're facing now I've only got three things to say, really. One is the word that Bill used in the conclusion, and that is engage. I think engaging, you know, with people is is a part of the this this house early on, and I think that's that's important. And I think if care homes are going to be uh, redesigned in the future, I think we all collectively need to engage. Uh, with the people who are going to be living in them, and we all might well be living in one in, in the future, so engagement. Secondly, the uh, point I would make is the international dimension of the research. And Bill showed two publications. There was a third one called the International Dimension, where we looked at buildings in Japan, in Holland, and uh, and actually in Finland, so you know finding out about what's going on as well as on our, on our own doorstep, what is going on internationally that is of some quality, and I think this uh, this event is starting to do that. So uh, so engagement and in the international dimension, and finally uh, we all know GPs for different reasons. I had a very friendly GP uh, who represented the, the patient's panel, and he always said to me, remember, as well as the person with de dementia, is the carer. And the carer, you know, lives in the house, in the dwelling, in the neighbourhood for 24 hours a day. So we've got to be, you know, cautious and careful to support the carers, so that's what I would do if I was, you know, involved. Most recently, during lockdown, uh, I've been working with a number of people about designing a virtual care home. You know, starting to think about how could we improve care homes using virtual technology. You know, when lockdown started. I didn't know a thing about, you know, Zoom and Team and all these kind of things. It's a complete mystery. And I probably don't know about them now. But, you know, it's kind of interesting 
what this technology is doing to us and what it might help us to do in terms of designing for care homes. And Bill showed the sand tray and he showed the, uh, the physical models that were used at the early stages of the, of the house. And that was about a kind of engagement, a hands-on engagement, which we can't do at the moment. You know, we, we couldn't have a model and shake hands and, and hug. Um, hopefully in the future, we will be have, able to have physical models of care homes for the future. And that's all I would say. And I'll just say thank you very much for this event. I can, I've got a view of green. I can see trees. I can see squirrels. You know, I can look out the window. <laughs> Not everybody can do that. I mean, you know, we've got to be proactive in the future. So, so thank you very much. You know, BRE, uh, you know, we, we have a number of roles, I guess, in the UK and, and also across the 80 odd countries that we work with, um, you know, very much standards and certification is a key to what we look at. So that's also um, an area for consideration in relation to this particular agenda, actually. You know, is there sufficient provision in current standards and also certification of products and buildings and and communities to drive best practice and you know we'd be keen to to engage with others on that um to to sort of lessons learned really from from sort of national agendas and policy so that's that's something from me so um i'd like to say thank you very much for listening and we very much welcome any suggestions for further collaboration between between parties in different countries. And so, yeah, thank you. Thank you again and have a great week.